sure to check out Ageless Geeks for your figures and collectibles. This video and YouTube channel is rated PG-13. So that means if you are under the age of 13, get the hell out of here. And you can come back when you are 13. So what is going on, my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Garrett 118 here, and today in this video we will be doing another quick look review, and this time it's going to be of the McFarland Toys, DC Multiverse, Arkham Origins, Deathstroke. So let's get into it right away and take a very quick look at the box. So as you can see here, we do get the basic style box when it comes to McFarland's DC Multiverse line. You see the window right there in the front of the box displaying the figure and the accessories, but I already took the figure out of the box, DC Multiverse, Deathstroke, there's the bottom, the top, the one side, and then the other side, and then the back does have a dope image, I'm guessing, from the game. And we also do get a card of this image, so that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open and take a closer look at what accessories are included with Deathstroke. And he's not included with that gun. Alright, so for the Stroke of Death's accessories, he is not included with much, which to me I think is the biggest disappointing thing about this figure. Here is a mercenary who's always equipped with weapons, and all we get with him is a sword. That's it. And then he also has the sheath on his back as well. This is all we get with Deathstroke. And if you want to include these, which I, I technically don't think these are accessories. They're just little add-ons, really, which is the card. Cards are cool, man. I, I dig the, the artwork on them, or I guess this is an image from the game there. And then we do get the uh, the basic McFarlane Toys stand that has DC on it and then a peg on it as well. But yeah, man, really disappointed with this one lonely accessory here. I mean, the sword looks fine. Paint's pretty clean on it, the, the sculpt detail looks fine, it is a very soft rubbery type plastic. But one issue with it, when you store it in the sheath, the sheath you have to unpeg from his back and then it slides in this little loop there. Every time you put it in, or and take it out, it takes some paint off, so you have to be careful with the silver. If you're going to leave it in the, uh, in the sheath, leave it in the sheath. If you're going to have him hold it, have them just hold it, because the more you put it in and take it out, the more it's going to take the paint off. But that's how you put it in, you just push it in right there. I wish we had more of a, a traditional sheath, where you just slide it in. But then after you do that, you slide it through the loop, and then you peg it onto his back. But sometimes the sheath, like, bends, so it starts warping, not just itself, but the sword along with it. So make sure it's not bent or anything, or you're going to have... A bent sword. I mean, it looks fine in there, but I, I don't like how you could see the sword right there. But, yeah, man, wish they at least included a gun with him. You know, you could at least gave us a handgun with the figure. So those are the very minimal amount of accessories with Deathstroke. Now let's take a closer detailed look at the figure itself. Alrighty, taking a closer detailed look, and this is definitely the best aspect to this figure. The, the paint and sculpt detail just turned out incredibly well on this figure here. The head sculpt looks great. I dig the mask. You can see his one left eye there, which is painted nice and clean. But the paint's really clean where the line for the orange and blue meet. Very nice job on that. And I do like the, the sculpt work of the mask. I like how we have a sculpted texture on the blue side as well. And then we do get his little uh, strap things, whatever the hell they're called. And they're a softer rubbery type plastic. And those look cool. I do like the way those turned out. And then the torso here, the armor looks great. We do get this like harness or strap piece going across the torso with a couple pouches and stuff going on there. But I dig the sculpted texture once again to the bluish type color and we do have battle damage all throughout the armor as well and I really dig the way that looks. Then we do get this uh, fish scale male type looking armor and I dig the way that looks also really cool looking. And then the back here we do have the, the sheath there of course with the sword. More damage to the armor as well. And just really nice clean paintwork on this figure. The arms turned out pretty good. We do get that sculpted texture once again on the blue. A little bit of the orange paint bled on there, but not anything too horrible. We do get more of that silver 
fish scale type armor there which looks dope the gauntlet looks great on both arms or gauntlets very clean paintwork more battle damage as well then we do get uh i guess shotgun shells or something or or, or whatever the hell they are on the left shoulder armor and we do get more battle damage all throughout the left arm as well and then for the the belt here we get some more pouches and stuff a grenade and nothing on the back there oh crap i didn't realize the leg was bending in the buttocks piece whoopsie daisy but uh, everything up here looks fine around the belt area and then on the legs here the left leg we do get this strap with like a pouch on it we do get more uh, battle damage to the armor as well on the thighs. And then we do get a holster with a molded freaking gun in it. One thing I can't stand is when figure companies give us molded guns or molded knives on figures. It's like, come on, man, just let it be removable, damn it. See, that that's an accessory they could have gave with a death stroke, man. So not happy about that, but love the battle damage all throughout the armor, especially that big gash. On the knee armor there then the lower legs look pretty dope with the boots and everything we do get that sculpted texture once again to the blue there the 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 feet themselves turned out fine nothing too crazy going on there and then the bottom of them we do get some pretty cool sculpted treads there so overall the detail like i said it, it definitely best part to this figure that's where mcfarland definitely knocked it out of the park with this Deathstroke here, and he can be troublesome to, to stand. I, I noticed that with McFarlane figures, because he does like the ratchety type joints, and he does it with the ankles as well, so it does make his figures a bit difficult to stand. So there's a closer detail look. Now let's go over the height and height comparisons of the Stroke of Death. Now for the height of Deathstroke to the very top of his head, it looks like he's a little bit over seven inches tall. And then here he is compared to the McFarlane Toys, the Grim Knight, the McFarlane Toys, Nightwing, the McFarlane Toys, Arkham Asylum, Joker, and the DC Essentials, Red Hood. And as you can see, Deathstroke does scale really well with the other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. And then here he is compared to the NECA TMNT Original Movie Raphael, the NECA Ultimate Edition Lost Armored Predator, the Storm Collectibles 2020 Convention Exclusive Scorpion, and for the hell of it, the Mafex comic version Deadpool. So there is the height and height comparisons. Now let's go over the articulation and wrap this video up. So now for the articulation, and he has pretty good movement. Kind of basic for McFarlane's multiverse line. So we do get the one joint at the neck here, and Deathstroke really can't look up at all. Looks down much better though and then we do get pretty good pivot there as you can see and then of course we do get the swivel now we don't get a torso joint we only get a waist joint with death stroke and that joint goes forward a tiny bit it's kind of like a ratchety type joint there goes back pretty well you do get pretty good pivot at that joint and you could see it's a ratchet type joint there and then it also does swivel even swivel even the even the swivel is ratchet e now for the arms here we do get a pretty good shoulder joint there actually and then the arms do go out to the sides about 90 degrees they do go up and down we do have true bicep swivel i noticed the bicep on the bicep swivel on my right arm sometimes pops out and i have to push it back in so i don't know if i'm the only one with that issue but just be cautious of that in case it might happen to yours. Then we do get the double jointed elbow. That do, of course, bend in all the way, so that's definitely dope. Then we do have a ball hinge on the wrist, so that does swivel. And then it hinges back and forth there. Now for the legs here, Deathstroke kicks forward about 90 degrees. Goes to the back about 90 degrees. Damn it, that piece did it again on the buttocks. Then let's see if Mr. Stroke of Death can Jean-Claude... Van damn it, and he almost can. It's getting hindered a bit by like the pouch and the holster and his belt and stuff, but the legs do go out to the sides decently. We get a tiny bit of a hip swivel, really not too much. Then we do have double jointed knees, and the upper knee joint on mine is stuck, so I can't get it to go any further back than that. Let's see if the left leg does it. 
Yeah, they go back maybe about 90 degrees. I don't know if they can go back any further, though. Then the ankles here, they do swivel. It is a ball hinge, just like the wrists. The ankles do hinge up only about that much. Hinge down pretty good. And this piece is a softer, rubbery type plastic. And then for the pivot, but he does have a decent ankle pivot there. And then we do have a nice toe hinge. So overall, the articulation, pretty basic when it comes to McFarlane's multiverse line. I do wish he had a torso joint, but the waist joint still isn't that bad. But anyway, that is my quick look review at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Deathstroke. Hope you enjoyed it. Overall, this figure definitely is not too bad at all. The detail, hands down, my favorite part to the figure. I think McFarlane did an exceptional job with the paint and the sculpt detail. Articulation isn't too bad. It's pretty basic. I feel like some points definitely could have been a little bit better. And then the accessories, biggest, biggest downside to this figure. All you get is his sword, not counting the card and the stand. I really don't count those as accessories. They could have at least gave him a gun or something, you know what I mean? So definitely not happy with the accessories. And we get no alternate hands at all either so hopefully in the future we do see more accessories for the figure itself with future releases but if you do see this figure down the line somewhere and deathstroke is one of your favorite characters or you dig this line i would definitely recommend picking him up if you don't like figures who lack big time in accessories you will not be too happy with this figure here but like i said all in all i think it's a pretty damn cool figure for this McFarlane DC Multiverse line. But anyway, that is my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, oh well, I guess you don't like it. But thanks for watching. I will see you later. But stay tuned for pictures next. do get that card type image that we do get to blah, blah, blah. and as you can see he does scale really well with the other McFarlane damn you Red Hood you bastard he does have decent damn that fridge burn in hell you bastard